The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. If you want to love at the highest levels, you got to pay attention to more than just your agenda because that's what keeps us from doing that. And that means we have to be mindful. Sometimes I think of it, it's like wearing mirrored sunglasses, but you've taken the lenses out and you flipped them around and you put them back on and all you see is a reflection of your own needs. Psychologist and best-selling author, Dr. Les Parrott reveals five transformative ways of relating to people as we try to love like that next. Thank you very much. Uh, James Robinson here. Betty and I welcome you to life today. I got a big grin on my face. Dr. Les uh, Parrott is here. And I mean, he is just a, <laughs> he's a treasure in the sense that he's, he's able to communicate what lifts people up sometimes out of a, a pit of despair and gives them hope. Uh, he's been a tremendous blessing to marriages and to relationships, even helping people actually find a relationship. He's very excited about this book. It's called Love Like That, Five Relationship Secrets from, not less, from Jesus. Would you welcome Les Parrott to life today? Thanks. Thanks for being I here. appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Let's just take off. Let's, let's, let's cover some Can ground. I just say something before you even ask me Go a question? It. Because I've been on this program over the years, numerous sure. times, and you have such an anointing, such an incredible blessing to so many people. And I don't know if anybody ever says that on the air, but I just had to say that because we've been hanging out. We had dinner together, and it's just incredible to think of all the years, 50 years you've yeah, been doing this. Television, yeah. So it may not be my position to do that. I just had to get it out of me because it was in there. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. And, and really it is our viewers that enable us to do what we do, even mm. to host this program and to put God's loving arms around yeah. the world. So when you talk about love like that, yeah. I know that you're talking about loving as much as we can like Jesus, at least I would think so. Tell us why you wrote the book. Tell us, tell us why yeah. and, and what your hope for it is because I know you're caring about all the people here and all the people watching. I know with all your heart yeah. You want to impart something to them that is For sure. very meaningful. Yeah. This little phrase, love like that. There's a passage in Ephesians chapter 5 where, where Paul is talking about how Jesus loves. And years ago, I read this kind of with fresh eyes for the first time. I uh, read it many times in the past. But I read it, and it's describing how Jesus loves in extravagant ways. And it just describes how Jesus loves. And then he closes the little paragraph with this three word sentence, love like that. And it just struck me in the time that I read this years ago, are you kidding me? Love like that? How in the world am I supposed to do that? Have you ever felt like that? It was just like, I, I, it, the bar is so high, I can't even get close to loving like that. It's love at the highest levels. And yet Jesus commands us to love like he does, and so does the Apostle Paul. And I thought, well, how do we do this? And it really set me off on a personal quest to understand in practical ways. I wasn't getting into the theology, wasn't necessarily looking at history or whatever. I was looking at as a practitioner, really as a psychologist. How do you love at the highest levels? And so it was that quest. I took my first trip to Israel as a result of this project. I went into all kinds of interviews with experts and, and, and folks to really understand for myself. It wasn't about, oh, I wanna write a book on this someday. I wanted to understand. You know, this is my life. How do I do that? How do I do that as a parent with my two boys? How do I do that with Leslie, my wife? And, and by the way, I kind of feel a little bit like half a person because she's usually here with me when we're, <laughs> we're doing this. But I wrote this book on my own because it's a, it's a personal quest. How do I do that with my colleagues at work and, and, and uh, with even strangers? How do you love like Jesus? And it felt a little bit like Paul was going, hey, it's an incredible view up here at the top of Mount Everest, uh, so climb up. You know, it's like, how? How do I even begin to do that? And that's what this book is. And so what I did, I looked at the intersection between really the teachings of Christ and the most salient moments in his life on earth and where they intersected 
And I discovered these five things, didn't discover them, like they're there for anybody to see, but I, I pulled them together to, to help me get a handle on a practical way to begin to love more like Jesus. Okay, you start with the chapter. Let me read the, the five chapters. Yeah. Mindful, approachable, graceful, bold, self-giving. Well, yeah. Just take off on mindful. Yeah, so when I, like I said, I look at the intersection of the teaching and the life examples, and the first one to jump out at me was, I, I began to realize, if you want to love like Jesus, you've got to see what other people don't see. Let me say that again. If you want to love like Jesus, you've got to see what other people are not seeing. And he was a master at this. So many examples of this. And then as a psychologist, I realized just how incredibly challenging this is as human beings. Let me give you one quick kind of uh, really, I think one of the most fascinating psychological studies that's been done in the last 10 years. And uh, it was done in, in London first in, in this university. And they had this, they, they shot a video of a basketball team, uh, two, one in white shirts, one in black shirts. And uh, they, they were just passing the ball back and forth and so forth. And the task, they recorded it, put it in front of a group of people and said, count how many times the guys in the white shirts passed the basketball. And so you'd watch and you'd, you'd get, okay, I think it might be six, seven times, maybe, I don't know. And it, but uh, you have a pretty good idea. Nothing tricky about it. And then that's not really the experiment because then the experimenter comes out and says, how many of you noticed the gorilla? The gorilla, what? Well. Let me play it for you one more time. And they show the video. In the middle of these guys playing basketball, this guy in a gorilla suit comes out. He looks right at the camera. He's 10 feet away from it. Beats his chest, stands there for about three seconds, and walks off frame. And nobody believes it. That was a different video. Surely I would have seen that. But no, we humans, when we get focused on a task, when we have an agenda, we sometimes miss the most obvious things right in front of us. Now, I've replicated that study. I've done it with my, my own university students in Seattle, where I live, and it's phenomenal. People can't believe you can miss the most obvious things. Well, Jesus was saying to us, I think, by example and in his teaching, that if you want to love at the highest levels, you got to pay attention to more than just your agenda because that's what keeps us from doing that. And that means we have to be mindful, you know, to be mindful to, to actually, it's kind of like, uh, sometimes I think of it, it's like wearing mirrored sunglasses, but you've taken the lenses out and you flipped them around and you put them back on and all you see is a reflection of your own needs. And that's just human nature, right? That's just how we go about living because we have lots of needs. But if you want to love like Jesus, you begin to take those sunglasses off, or at least the lenses out, and you begin to recognize other people's needs that you've been missing out on. That was the first clue I got into how do you begin to love like Jesus. So an example from the, the life of Christ would have to be Zacchaeus, right? I mean, that's, you, you learned that if you went to, to Sunday school as a little kid. Sure. And yet so powerful because nobody saw Zacchaeus the way Jesus saw him. Right? Everybody despised him, this tax collector, taking advantage of us, one of our own countrymen, and yet he's working for, for Rome, and, he's, and, and nobody, everybody despised him. And Jesus came into town. Zacchaeus wanted to get a look at him, of course, and Jesus just says his name, Zacchaeus. And it was in a way that Zacchaeus, how does he know me? How does he, how does he, and, and it drew him to him. And, and what Jesus saw was a man that was needy. What Jesus saw was a man that was broken. What Jesus saw was a man that was in need of redemption and that was really hungry to be a different kind of person. But nobody else could see it because of our own agendas. And so that, that boy, that just popped out of the, the New Testament to me when I was thinking about how do you become more mindful? I don't know of a clear, it's probably the most dramatic conversion story in the entire New Testament. Gave back sevenfold what he given to other people, taken from other people. So uh, when you're trying to help someone, <clears throat> become mindful because as I'm listening to you and I find myself knowing that, that I notice when this love of Jesus, that you say love like that, when I allow this love to rise up and flow and, and to some degree overwhelm me, yeah. that I do become mindful and very interested in that person and their well-being. I really care. I know you even heard as we were talking how I find an overflow for people that you would see 
that you might be have right. a tendency to despise right. because of their actions. And yet I think you could hear even what I'm saying that something happening in me that that reaches beyond all the facade or the failure or the misery. Right. And there's a love, the love of God. I believe that's Holy Spirit yeah. power. And so when you're you're saying I want to love like that and you're giving us an illustration of how we seldom do, yeah. but how he did, then how do you help someone take that step to get into that place of walking yeah. there? So in a really practical way, it's it, it really comes down to intention. You have to make a decision to want to love like that and then look for a practical way of doing it. And for me, what I've discovered, and just I think as I study human nature, you've got to recognize your agenda and set that aside. See, we all have an agenda all the time. The agenda might be, how, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? The agenda might be, um, I want to finish this book before I make a phone call. Whatever it is, we all have continual agendas, uh, big and small. And those agendas are what keep the mirrored sunglasses flipped around because all I can see is my task and what I've got to get done and so forth. And Jesus says, no, no, no. If you want to love at the highest levels, set your agendas aside, at least temporarily. We're not talking about forever, just temporarily to recognize somebody else's needs. So when, when your son comes home from, from grade school, you might see something that no teacher saw that day. You might see something that no other adult saw in him that day. And, and as a parent, you want to be able to see that, right? And in, instead of thinking, well, why did he put his backpack down there and he's making a mess or whatever, you might want to really begin to see that little heart and what, what's taking place. Or your spouse, you know, are you seeing your spouse like Jesus would see your spouse in ways that nobody else is. And your, your colleagues, your friends, and everybody else. So it's that agenda, if you can set the agenda aside, that's the practical message in this first chapter. And by the way, I gotta tell you something. When you decide to love like Jesus, it's inconvenient. It slows down your life. Now, you're like me, you're hardwired for speed. We wanna get it done <laughs> yesterday, right? Sure, sure. We're urgent about it. You got six bags of groceries to take upstairs. How many trips should it take? One trip. You're gonna put them on every hand. <laughs> Open the doors, right? You want, you, you, you live life with a little urgency. In fact, uh, just as a quick aside to tell you how urgent I am, Leslie and I live in a high rise downtown in Seattle. Because of that, we're on elevators almost every day of our life. And this summer, they were fixing one of the elevators in our building. And the building's five years old. And uh, I said, hey, guys, I don't know what you're repairing in there, but I said, there's a button that has never worked in the elevator ever since we moved in here. And he said, oh, yeah, what's that? I said, it's the button that has the two arrows pointing at each other to close <laughs> the doors faster. And he said, uh, oh, yeah, he said, uh, those, those don't work because there was a law passed back in the late 70s. Too many people were getting injured, and so in a lot of elevators, uh, they just don't work on, on purpose. I said, well, why would they put the button in there? He said, for guys like you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I still press it, even knowing it doesn't work. <laughs> but if you live life with a certain level of urgency, and you have your agendas, and you have tasks, and important things that you want to get to, if you want to love like Jesus, it's going to be inconvenient. It's going to slow you down because the path you're traveling is going to take a detour now because I, I saw something I wasn't seeing before, right? Yep. That's the tough part. Well, That's the challenge. It takes some effort. It takes effort. To be abandoned from ourselves and being abandoned unto him it. that we might love, through, that his love might come through Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. And ultimately, of course, it comes down to the Holy Spirit, right? And, and in fact, uh, you know, you already mentioned living in the Holy Spirit through this because, and you're kind of getting to the, the closer, the, the conclusion of the book. I go through these five things and, and basically. I want to get to the end in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to finish the book and you haven't even started it. And, and uh, <laughs> but it, it's, it really is true. And I, I, I look at all these five things and I still feel like, how am I supposed to, okay, maybe I have the tools. I have some know-how on how to climb Mount Everest, but man, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I, I have the strength. And Jesus, you know, gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's how I, I close the last chapter is looking at that. And I, I just love, and I, you know, I look at the world as a psychologist, obviously, but somebody that is passionate about loving like Jesus. And I look at that Last Supper 
and you know what took place there. In psychology, we call it a flashbulb memory. It's a memory, it's something you will never forget. You will never forget where you were on 9-11 when you heard the tragic news, right? Um, if you're of a certain age, you won't remember when Kennedy was shot or whatever it might be, right? You're gonna remember those are flashbulb memories. And Jesus created this and even said, do this in remembrance of me. I don't want you to ever forget this. Mm -hmm. And he did that dramatic thing where he began to wash their feet and they were like, what are you doing? They would never forget that, right? The rabbi doesn't do that. The teacher doesn't do that. And, and then as they conclude that, that meal, they walk across that valley, which I'm guessing you've walked across just like I have, and you go up there to the Garden of Gethsemane. And in, in those days, it would have been through vineyards. And he uses that as his last illustration with these disciples, right? Mm -hmm. And he says, remember this. He says, remember, I am the vine, you're the branches and that's where you're gonna get your power. And I've gotta leave you, but I'm gonna leave you with a friend, capital F, the friend, the Holy Spirit. And that's the only way to ultimately love like Jesus. You can do all these techniques and strategies. We need them, we need to be aware of them, but ultimately it's exactly what you're getting at. It's you gotta live the life through the Holy Spirit to make it happen. And you feel like if you uh, can get all of our viewers to read that they'll, in a sense, hopefully feel like they're sitting at the feet of Jesus, yeah. but that they're attending a seminar with you that would be <laughs> many hours or maybe even part of several days yeah. and trying to impart something. And so what you're trying to do, because if we can love like Jesus, everything around us is affected by the greatest power in the universe, yes. the power of love that never fails. Right when you really let it flow. Well, it changes everything, right? I mean, when love permeates your, your life and you allow it to seep down into the corners and crevices of your daily living, you begin to live life at the highest level. Life is never the same. You love the life you live as you love other people. Do you think as people go through chapter after chapter and they, they uh, take those, uh, those points that uh, we went over with the uh, chapter titles, mm -hmm. that you are approachable? You're graceful, mm -hmm. full of His grace. You have boldness, you have courage, mm -hmm. and you're self-giving. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they'll be inspired by what they read to move into that, at least to begin the yeah. process of allowing the Holy Spirit to take over all those areas of their life where they can yeah. love like that? I love that question because it gets at something that is so important to human nature. We psychologists sometimes say awareness is curative. Once you become aware of something, then you can do something about it. I walked into my 16 year old's room the other day and I said, Jack, this place is a mess in here. And he looked around and he said, it is? <laughs> I, well, I guess it is, yeah. <laughs> Got a skateboard over here and you know, all kinds of crazy. And, but he wasn't aware of it, right? But once you're aware of it, then you can maybe do something about it if you want to. And it's the same thing with this. And so one of the things I did in this book was build in a self test into each chapter. And so when it comes to the, the things that those five things that we've mentioned, mindful being the first one. Remember, if you want to love like Jesus, you've got to see what other people don't. That's the first key. And, and to do that, it's good to take inventory. How am I doing on that right now? Even before I start the chapter. And so I recommend people, and I say it in the, in the first chapter, before you go any further, go online. I've built it so it's, and it's free. It comes with the book for free. And you can take a little, little quick assessment. It takes a couple minutes just to kind of see, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. And then take it again after you finish the chapter and given it a couple days to kind of marinate in that a little bit. Take it again and continually monitor yourself because it's that self-awareness, mm -hmm. you, you know, that's a, the old business thing. What gets measured gets managed, right? That's good. And the more you measure, how am I doing when it comes to loving like Jesus? I don't want to, you don't have to get an Excel sheet. You don't have to get crazy about it. But a little kind of self-awareness on that can really kind of bump it up and help you put it into practice. Would you say thanks to Les Parrott for coming to share with us and for taking the time to write a book like this and Thomas Nelson for publishing it because they published so many great ones. Les, thank you. By the way, can I mention, if people want to take that little test that I mentioned and learn more about it because sure. they can do a small group on this, they can do a workbook that comes with it, DVD, all that in a small group if they want to do that. All of it's at lovelikethatbook. Com. Great, and yeah. so they can already get started. And, Absolutely. And they can take it beyond themselves. Yeah. Les, our viewers, and you really are, I'm not, I'm not just trying to be, you know, uh, I'm trying to be just f flattering for flattery's sake. You are really amazing people. You, you do, in my opinion, love amazingly, 
and you share amazing grace with that love. We're rescuing, and this is the last week right now of Rescue Life to get precious children and girls primarily out of sexual trafficking. I want you to look in on this, and I want you to look through the eyes of Jesus and love like that and just see what you're led to do. You're going to change everything for someone. It's going to be amazing. Who's your Who's your best friend? She said, no, nobody. Do you have anyone that you trust? No. I mean, some of these are like 14, 15 year old girls and they wake up beside some 50, 60 year old man and they're held for weeks and months. Do you remember that first night? Do you remember what that felt like? You and I, as God's sons and daughters, we've got to be the ones telling these girls, you have a future and you have a purpose and you have a hope and there is a God who loves you. And there are people on this planet who know this God and want to share this love with you. You are not worthless. You are not worth $10 every time a man comes through the door. If we don't help, nobody's going to help. And Lord, I just want to pray for every one of these precious girls that our relief workers and mission workers have located that we can rescue if we have the help. And then, Lord, I ask you to set those men free who are held captive by their own appetites. Dear Jesus, what a horrible prison they live in, too. And they hurt so many, whether intentional or not. So much damage. Please set them free. Help them to trust you to do that in Jesus' name. Would you help us set those precious, precious ones free? Betty, we've been doing it for years because our viewers said we want to do it. We showed them an opportunity, wondering if you would turn the television off and never want to watch it again because you show settings and scenes like that. But thank you. Thank you because the love of God carried you beyond the ugly to see the potential of what love can do. And when we tell you that thousands and thousands of precious girls and many times literally thousands of children have been rescued from sexual trafficking because of the love of God through you. These rescue workers and mission workers have planted their lives right there in the midst of the pain. But they have to have the resources to do what's necessary to get them out and care for them. We reach them, we rescue them, and we restore them. When I say we, that's all of us together. Would you right now, would you make a gift to rescue one? Now think about this. We've got a $320,000 matching gift right now because people like you said, you know what? I want to double what people give. That's how much it's on my heart. It takes $128, that's the average, to rescue one person and to take care of them for a year. Isn't that amazing that you can do that? It's a miracle, but it's true. It actually works. Well, now then, $128 will rescue two. I always challenge our viewers, Betty, and you know that I try to get people to reach beyond what they would think of right off the top of their head because we tend to protect our resources sometimes when we could be doing so much more that's effective. $1,280, you can rescue 10, but now it's doubled, it's 20. Would you help us rescue not 10, but 20 with a gift of $1,280? We have some gifts that we want to send you to say thank you you're going to be blessed as you get the promises of Christ's book, The Name of Jesus Throw. It is a beautiful, beautiful throw. 
in the arms of Jesus, the shepherd, the arms of the shepherd, the safety there, the security that's found there, if you make the gift of over $1,280 or $1,280 to help, would you please right now go get your bank card or go to the telephone and call, take that card or online and use it like a check? Would you do that? Would you make the gift God put on your heart? If you want to write a check, make it to life. But call us and tell us you're mailing it. Please do it. Remember, this is the last week. We really do need to hear from you today. Thank you so much for doing it. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be double to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Promises of Christ gift book filled with beautiful photographs, scriptures, stories, and commentary from James Robison. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Names of Jesus Throw. This beautifully woven blanket features the names of Jesus in many languages. It'll make a lovely addition to your home and serve as a beautiful reminder and spiritual comfort to the Lordship of our Savior. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request our beautiful new bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You know, I want to say thanks for your help, Betty, and I appreciate so much the fact that you put God's arms of love around people that are too often overlooked. But that love never fails. It works. If you'd like to have Dr. Les Parrott's book, Love Like That, well, you uh, just say, would you mind sending me that? I'm going to help you rescue those precious ones, get them out of that trap, and I'd like to have that book. We'll be glad to send it to you. Encourage your friends to get a copy of it. Les, we're going to talk to you and, and Jenny Allen tomorrow. I'm sure Jenny will That's straighten crazy. us all out. About Absolutely. How love yeah. like that. <laughs> Would you say thanks to Les Parrott Thank for you. being with us? Thank you, Les. Thank all of you. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for helping us share the love of God all over the world. Thank you. Pull yourself away from the devil. We're living out the scary but beautiful purposes he has for us. Jenny Allen joins Dr. Les Parrott to discuss loving like Jesus tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.